Okay, this is chapter eight, fighting the gorilla. I had my worst nightmare ever that night. It was like those vampire movies, long lines of people moving down the street with torches. They're screaming, bring him out. Let him feel like what it's like. They swarm the house, the cabin where I lived before. My dad goes to the door. I'm standing behind him. He goes out into the porch and the whole screaming mob throws their torches at him. Dad goes up in flames as I watch, paralyzed because I see that the flaming things weren't torches. They're baseball gloves, gloves of fire. Kip, hey, kiddo, wake up. I jolted out of sleep to see one of the war ward Nazis leaning over me. You're okay, settle down, kiddo. He must have really bit the gorilla. I was dripping sweat. My head was pounding in. What? Bit the gorilla, had a bad nightmare. You were screaming so loud, it sounded like somebody bit a gorilla in there. It was more like the gorilla bit me. She kind of squatted so she could look me in the eye. You okay? Want me to call the doc? Nah, I think I can handle it. I can give you something to calm you down. You might not realize it, but you're twitching like a fly bit horse. I almost smiled at that one. You think these things up? to use when we go whacked out on you? Bit the gorilla, fly bit horse. I pointed my index finger at her. I think you need to talk to Doc about this biting fixation. Don't give me your 50 cent psychology. Do you want serious pharmaceuticals to get you back to sleep or do you want me to whip your skinny butt at chess? Can I have hot chocolate? Sure. I gotta warn you, I'm the best chess player on the board. Honey, most of the people on this ward call the rook a horse and then bite its head off. And there you go again with the biting fixation. I couldn't play chess for beep, but I'd lo rather lose all night long than sleep and take another chance at that dream. Hey, um, I didn't know your name, I said. I'm usually asleep when you're on duty. You don't call me ward Nazi like you do all the other ward nurses. Busted. She laughed out loud. That's okay, kiddo. It's the nurses that started calling you guys the loon platoon. She must have noted my expression. Hey, kid, even in a place like this, what goes around comes around. That's pretty much what I was afraid of. Oops. Sorry about that. I hear Belinda taught you to play chess, the frown said. I knew how to play already. Not according to Belinda, I grinned. She might be right after all. A nightmare that bad? I think we need to talk about it. I'd rather talk about the beep storm Carrie mentioned. I want to know why dad had to change his name. I figured as much, the frown said. He dropped a thick folder on the desk and slid it towards me. I have some videos too. News clips and documentary about children killing children. They couldn't use your name, but it leads with your case. The Clarks are interviewed. Your cabin is shown. He pulled three videos out of a drawer and stacked them on his desk. I've got paperwork to do. I suggest you read first. Ask me anything you want. Say anything you'd like. You're free to vent. When you're through reading, we can watch the videos together. Then we'll talk. I've blocked the whole afternoon for you. A whole afternoon? You think I'm at a big turning point? You turn off it enough, you end up straight ahead again. Let's just say it's going to be a rough day, and I'm heading for the couch. I gathered up the file and stretched out on the couch, wadding a pillow under my neck. My name was never printed, but my home was pictured as the scene of the crime. The first reports were unclear. Two juveniles were involved, and both were hospitalized, one for burns. As soon as it became clear that one juvenile was responsible for the fatal burning of the other, the crime became the heinous crime. I read ranting letters to the editor about criminals hiding from prosecution behind their age, furious letters about protecting the community from its bad seeds. One woman's letter quoted the Bible's teaching that seven was the age of reason, and so the nine-year-old devil child needed to go to hell and learn what the burning was all about. Seven really the age of reason, I asked? You reading those letters to the editor? I nodded. That's fear talking. Something happened that people don't understand. Something that was out of anyone's control. 
So the easiest thing is to throw you away, put you out of sight so you won't scare them anymore. They pick the easy side to be on, the side of the most obvious victim. What do you mean? Bobby was the only victim. The frown took off his glasses and rubbed the little red marks on each side of the bridge of his nose. He replaced his glasses and adjusted them carefully before he looked at me. We got victim victims here to stack up. Bobby is the dead one. I couldn't think of anything to say. The Clarks are the victims, but they don't have to feel guilt like you do. I'm a victim? You and your dad, absolutely. Your lives are changed in every way. We'll be affected every day. You'll never shed the burden of guilt. Your dad feels the guilt of leaving you out there with the gas and the lighter, and now you're learning all of this. He gestured toward the file. Stuff. Shame's going to ride your shoulder like a vulture on a branch. Devil child, I said, looking back at the clipping. That's what the neighbors believe. I had spent all my time here dealing with my guilt, my issues. My circle only brought in to include dad, Bobby, and mom, but I was still the center. How had I never considered what other people thought of what I'd done? I knew what the loon platoon thought. How did the rest of the world disappear for me? Why didn't it occur to me that so many people would? I didn't know how to finish. I dropped the article back into the pile. That's what I meant about being institutionalized. You were young, just out of a coma, and I didn't want you to stress out about the outside world yet. Now it's time to consider the ramifications. So the, that means the results. I gave half a nod and picked up another clipping. It dealt with the hospitalization of the juvenile offender, his inability to stand trial and probability of a plea agreement. The next page stunned me. A picture of the blackened smoking remains of our cabin. I held up the picture. The frown nodded. Your dad was here in Anchorage with you. He lost everything except for a few clothes he had with him and the framed picture of your mother he brought down here for you. All the photographs of you as a child of your mom, all of it is gone. He took the picture from me and put it back in the folder. You can't go home again, Kip. I nodded numb. That's something your father wants me to speak with you about. I looked up, still unable to speak. He and Carrie want to move to the lower 48 when you leave here, and he wants you to consider changing your name. Sure. He said he used his mom's name. That's fine. A little more than that, Kip is a noticeable name. Kip from Alaska. Somebody, somewhere, sometime is going to put things together. Change my first name too? I know it's a lot. Let's see. No mother, house, home, past. Last name, first name? I won't know who I am. It might feel that way at first. It would feel like erasing myself. Well, maybe Kip McFarland shouldn't be around anymore. Bobby Clark wasn't. Could I shed Kip's guilt along with his name? I looked down at the photo of the burned cabin again. Dad had built that cabin himself. I'll do whatever dad wants.